Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel again. In this video, we will continue with this first developer interview question and answer series. Today, uh, we will discuss uh, part 8 video where I will be discussing uh, asynchronous apex. Okay, basically it is uh, it is an 8 part asynchronous apex series again within the developer series itself. So I have prepared total uh, eight videos on asynchronous apex where I will be covering all the different options we have for asynchronous apex. Okay. Uh, again, this is a continuation video. If you have not watched previous videos of the this series, then I strongly recommend to watch those videos first. Okay. So let's get started. So asynchronous apex. Okay. Let's uh, understand what is asynchronous apex. Okay, so the very first question in this uh, video is, what is asynchronous apex? Okay, so asynchronous apex is used to run a process in a separate thread at a later time. Okay, asynchronous apex process is a process or function that executes executes a task in the background without the user having to wait for the task to finish normally what happens right when you write a normal method as soon as you click maybe let's suppose a save button i have written and i have connected that save button to a method called save method right so what happens as soon as i write i, I click the save button that method will be executed immediately and we will get the result of that method immediately okay but asynchronous apex are not like that okay so what happens as soon as Let's suppose the same example, okay. I'll take a save button. This is just an example, okay. Uh, save button and, and I have connected to a future method, right. As soon as I click on save method and that save method, uh, as soon as I click on save button and that button calls a, a future method, um, a synchronous method, then what happens is that will run on its own time, okay. You will not get the result of that immediately, okay. So that is nothing but asynchronous, okay. Synchronous is something which will run immediately and asynchronous is, is something which run on its own time. You don't know when, okay. It depends on, you know, how busy your uh, org uh, resources are, okay. So if it is free, then it will run immediately, maybe in within few seconds. But if it is, if it is running something else, then it will wait and then run, uh, you know, whenever the resources are free. So basically a synchronous apex is used when we want to, you know, run something on a different thread. Okay. So next question is what are different asynchronous features available in Salesforce? So asynchronous Apex, you know, can be used in multiple different, uh, uh, you know, ways. Okay. So let's see in this question, what are the different ways we have uh, in, in terms of asynchronous Apex in Salesforce? Okay. So first, very first method, uh, asynchronous method is a future method. Okay. And then we have batch apex and then schedule apex and then queueable apex. So these are four options uh, we have in Salesforce to, you know, use as an asynchronous apex. Okay. So for future methods in a batch apex is the most frequently used one. Okay. And then schedule apex is, is also used and queueable apex is the least uh, I have seen in my experience so far. Okay. And, uh, Next question is when to use asynchronous apex. This is a very good question. When you should use. Okay. So basically, as we have discussed, there are four different options we have like feature methods, batch apex, schedule apex, and queueable apex. Let's go and see when we will use each of them. So feature method we can use when we want to make a call out to an external web service. So, so for example, I want to call out or I want to, you know, call out to a different system and then I, I don't know I'm not waiting for its result to come back immediately okay and I want it to run on its own thread so that time I can use feature method and the second option is when we have a long running method and needs to prevent delaying an apex transaction so next one is to segregate dml operations and bypass the mixed save dml errors I'm not sure if you remember one of my previous uh, questions about mixed dml's so basically mixed DMLs are occur, uh, mixed DML errors are occur when we try to use uh, setup and non-setup objects together, okay? Like I'm trying to use a opportunity object or account object along with that, I'm also trying to use the user object, okay? So those are uh, setup and non-setup object we cannot use together. 
so that time what we can do is for the uh, you know non set of objects like maybe opportunity or accounts we we write an immediate uh, method and then you know uh, for 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 set of objects like user you can you can write a future method and then let it uh, run on its own thread okay so that time you will not get mixed dml operations so that is the good uh, you know example you can use for feature methods next one is a batch apex so batch apex normally okay a batch apex we have not we have not you know uh, learned about it batch apex right now so we may be having more questions on batch apex in future but i will just give a brief so batch apex is normally used to run you know a lot of records at a time so here when we can use batch apex for long running jobs with a large data volumes that needs to be performed in the batches such as database maintenance jobs okay and uh, the other option for batch apex is we can also use it for jobs that need uh, larger query results than the regular transaction allows you know right normally if i write a select query it can it, it can give me the result up to 50000 records right but if i have to uh, perform a large query result like you know i want to fetch maybe 500000 or maybe maybe 100000 records in a query then at that time we can use batch apex as well so yeah and next one is schedule apex this is a simple one so to schedule an apex class to run on a specific schedule for example i want to perform some task let's suppose uh, you know i i want to run a job daily i want to run this apex uh, schedule every month and then see if there is any opportunity maybe you know not closed for more than 90 days and there is no activity going on i just want to uh, let's suppose close it okay so i can write a simple apex class and then i schedule it okay so we will discuss more about the schedule as well how we do that in in the future videos uh next one is queable apex uh, when we should use queable apex is to start a long running operations and get the id for the feature so you will understand this little bit more when we discuss you know what is the difference between queable apex and future methods so queable uh, apex you know give us the ability to get the id and track the job okay uh, so to pass the complex types of job like objects or custom apex types etc or to change the jobs right so this is this this one uh, for now you just read it for now okay don't worry about it uh, just think about you know what are the four options but what once we finish all the eight videos of this asynchronous apex come back to the question number 88 one more time okay if possible i will revisit in the last video this question number 88 you know then you will make sense all these points okay for now if you don't get it just read it and just go go ahead okay don't worry about it right now so the very first option uh from the asynchronous apex is feature methods this is the very frequently used one that is the reason i have added it as the first one to discuss uh in in our uh interview questions so what is a feature method basically so feature method is one of the asynchronous apex types which runs in the background or in its separate thread okay as i said right you can run a uh, in a separate thread so feature method is the same as any other uh, apex method with at the rate feature annotation it is simple method okay how you write a normal method this will be exactly same as a normal method only difference is you will write uh you know this at the rate feature annotation i'll, I'll show you just uh, in a moment in an in example so with feature methods we get some increased governor limits like sockel query limits and heap size limits so all asynchronous apex we get you know increased limits okay with the regular one you you will not have that much but with this you will have the increase asynchronous apex we will have increased limits so feature methods must be static and can only written void type I'll, I'll show you okay so what does this mean is uh it cannot have uh some like integer or maybe string return type it, it should not return anything it should run because because it because we cannot wait for feature method because feature method run on its own maybe time right so we should not have any method depending on the result of feature method that is the reason you cannot have a return type of uh, to return type of any other variables except void return type okay so here this is the example of uh, the feature uh, method so global class feature class this is a class i have written and i have written a normal method right but it should be a static and it should be a void that is that is the two mandatory things okay and then i'll write the feature method name and here i'll perform whatever normally what how do i write other uh, 
uh, methods i will write it over here so simple the only difference is we are adding at the rate future annotation that's it but it will it will run on its own thread so next question is does the future method supports all the data types as parameters or arguments right so it, it this question can be asked in a different way like what are the parameters uh, supported by the future method or sometimes they will ask uh, like you know what are the parameters which are not supported by feature methods okay so no the feature methods only support primitive data types or collections and do not support s object as an argument so what does this that means is only we can use primitive data type like integer string uh, or whatnot boolean and all those things as well as we can also use collections on prim uh, on a feature method but we cannot pass the s object as an argument okay next question is why does the feature method not support s object data type as an argument okay because the okay let's go and see so the reason why s object can't be passed as an argument to the feature method is because the s objects might change s object records might change between the time we call and method call the method and the time it executes you know right we have discussed so far that feature method run on its own time okay uh, let's suppose take an example i have run a future method at 5 5 pm i call a future method at 5 pm okay and then feature method took some time maybe 10 minutes to execute because until 10 minutes the the resources were not free or whatever the reason but actual feature method starts running at 5 10 so what happens is any changes we have done uh, to the records which are used in the feature methods in between 5 and 5 10 will be changed okay so that is the reason salesforce does not allow s object records as a parameters in the feature method okay cool next let's move on so what if we have the requirement to work with s objects in the future method so to work with s objects that already exist in the database pass the objects id instead or collection of ids and use the id to perform a query for the most up-to-date record so basically what you can do is instead of passing the whole s object record you can just pass the ids okay and when you when when the feature methods actually starts running you can use those ids and again query the database to get the up-to-date latest uh, uh, you know records of those ids and then perform your operations that is the best way okay so normally what happens is people try to use uh, uh, this uh, json serialize and deserialize to pass uh, basically s objects I would strongly recommend not to use it okay for time being because you're working on a developer or maybe a sandbox a sandbox is not uh, uh, you know used heavily right on a daily basis so you will see the right results when you are doing the development but let's suppose your same code goes into goes into production and then you know your feature methods took some time to run and in between uh, your records get modified then what happens is uh, what happens is your your result will be you know all all wrong because the data has been changed between 5 and 5 friend if for example i have given right so uh, try not to use uh, json serialize or deserialize or maybe if you don't know what is json serializing and deserializing just search on google and and find out how to pass maybe uh s objects on a feature method there are many examples that that is a hack you know people have uh, uh, find, find out to, to uh, pass the s objects but i would strongly recommend not to do that okay next question is can we make a call out to an external web services using feature method and how do we do it so yes we can make a call out to an external web service using the feature method with to say from that feature method can we call to an external web service okay so yes we can do that use an extra parameter call out is equals true with the feature annotation like at the rate future is the regular uh, annotation but you can have a bracket and say call out is equals to true means it will allow us to uh, call the external web service okay this is how you can do the call out to the external uh, web service using the feature method cool so write a sample code utilizing a future method the following code use a normal method to insert an account record 
and future method to insert a user record okay this is uh, this can also be an example to avoid the mixed DML operations. So what we are doing in this one is okay. So I have written a normal method public static void use feature method first DML operations. So what I am doing is account A is equals to new account. Okay, name is equals to act B inserting A. So this I am inserting into the account object. Then next what I am doing is this next operation inserts a user with a role can't be mixed with a previous insert unless it is within the future method. So I cannot write over here in the same method and insert into a user object. If I do so, then I will get a mixed DML operation. So what I am doing is I am, I am written, I have written an, another class called util and there I have written a insert user with role method. Okay. And I'm passing the parameters uh, like, you know, this, this parameters, let's suppose. So let's go to the, this is the main method and this is the future method. In future method, what I'm doing is this is util class and I'm calling this method feature. So this will run on its own thread. Okay. So if I go back uh, in the first instance, this will be run and this will be run as a independent thread. Okay. A separate thread. That is the reason you will not get a mixed DML operation error. Okay. So you can do, do, you know, such thing or such approach if you want to, if you want to avoid mixed DML operation or if you want to write a method, uh, run something now and, you know, run something for uh, along with the future method in a separate thread, then you can use this approach, main method and then the future method approach. Okay. So that's it for now. Uh, I have referred all the, all the questions over here from help.salesforce.com as well as the trial heads. Okay. So to give you the latest uh, uh, questions, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope uh, this video help uh, you prepare for your Salesforce developer interview and crack your next job. Okay. If you have any questions, uh, which you want me to, uh, which you want me to uh, in include in my videos, please post it in the comments below. And if you like this video, uh, make sure uh, to hit and subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. That way you don't miss the Salesforce interview question and answer videos like this one. Thank you.